Hey guys, in this video, I want to show you how to get file uploads in forms in Webflow using native Webflow forms without having to upgrade to the business plan. And it's pretty easy. So here's the issue. Let's say you're on a basic plan or a CMS plan and you're paying 12 or 16 bucks and you just want to, the only thing you want is just a simple file upload. Well, paying an extra, you know, going up to the business plan to that, that could be 20 plus dollars a month can be quite a bit of money now the other options are you know go go with a third party form company uh, but then you can't use like native forms and styling looks weird. It can't be consistent with your design. Um, so it'd be nice to be able to use Webflow forms. That's just what we're going to do. And we're going to do that by integrating with get form. Okay. So here's how it goes. So here I am in Webflow and I've just got a native Webflow form. And normally what I would do is I would come over here and I would dump in the file upload, but of course I'm not on that plan. So we got to do it a different way. So what we have to do is we have to do it with some custom code embed. Okay. So the first step is I'm just using that shortcut command E and I'm typing in embed. All right. And I'm embedding this custom code right here. And all this, all that we're going to dump in at first is just this input. All right. This is just a normal input of the type file upload. The other thing for this is we're going to have to link this up using IDs. So put the ID file right here, save it and close it and there. Boom. There's our, our file upload. Now you can, we can work on styling some other time. Um, if you want to make it look better and you can just search for, you know, file upload styling, um, and you can get stuff on that. So the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to actually put the code to uh, do this. And so we're just going to dump this inside of our body tag. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up some variables. And the first two is we're going to have to grab the form element, which is just what this is doing. And we're going to have to grab that file element. Okay. So this right here is what we did before where you've got the ID on the file. Okay. So we've already got that done. We're just throwing it into a variable. The next one is we're grabbing the form element. Okay. So we're going to grab this. I'm grabbing by the ID. And so we're just going to go over to our form. I'm going to save those changes. So add this Ajax form ID onto the form here, not on the form block, but the form, the first, that, that first child. Okay. Okay. The next thing is, uh, instantiating a form object thingy. So all this is saying is I'm doing a new form data. So when you're submitting forms with fetch, um, and if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. You can just search for it. We're just going to walk through it here really quickly. It'll work. You don't even have to understand it, but this is, this is the object that you're going to send all the data in. Okay. The next thing is this chunk of code right here. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. And this is listening to the change event on, let me get over here on this. So when that is to say, when you when someone clicks on this and they add a file, it's just listening to that. So it's saying, hey, when it changes, um, deal with these files. This is just making this this dot files, and that I got a note to myself. Now you can work with the f the files file list. That's just how you work with these. Okay, and let's say these are drawings that people are submitting, and I'm just saying, uh, append this to the form data object. Throw that in there. Okay. So what, what you have to do here is, is to, to add, because essentially you're going to be throwing all this data into the form data object and then sending the form data object out to wherever you need to, which I'll show you in a second. This right here, what you're appending is you're appending a name. So if you think about it like as a variable, this is just the name of the variable. Or if you think about it in terms of a spreadsheet, this is just like the column name, okay? And so this could be anything. It could be drawings. Maybe you're submitting um, an invoice. Um, it doesn't really matter. And I'm just grabbing, and 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 this is just saying, oh, what what is the actual content 
of the thing. And that's just looking inside of this thing and it's just grabbing the file. Okay. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to handle our um, submit. Okay. Because we're not going to be submitting with Webflow. This is not going to be running through Webflow forms. This is going to be running through this get form service. Okay. So the first thing we do is we're going to prevent default. So this is saying add, add an event listener on our form, which is this right here. And the first thing we're going to do is prevent default. And what prevent default does is it says, don't do the normal thing that you do as a form. Don't do that because we're not, we're not using um, Webflow's forms. And so we don't want to do the normal thing. We say, don't do anything. We will deal in our code with the with the file with the form upload. We're going to deal with it all. You browser, don't worry about that. All right. The next thing is grabbing um, the actual variables for the DOM elements for um, whatever we're submitting. So here, I just have a name and an email. Okay, and to get this. We've got um, these IDs here on name and email, and it's just grabbing the value out of there. So I'll show you how to set that up. So you just come in here. This is our name, ID name. It's already in there, so I don't have to add it in. And here is email. That's already added in, but if it's not, just dump it in there. And so then we've got those, and that's how, that's how we're going to access to get whatever people, their name and their email address, and get it in there. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab these variables for um, success and failure or error. So um, I'm I'm grabbing these. This is part of how to work with native Webflow forms. These w dash is what um, you don't see these classes inside of Webflow. These are classes that Webflow creates and adds automatically to forms. And those are these things. Let me show you. If you go into here, we see the success message and this error message. And th this technique here is what is what is part of what is allowing us to use native forms. So we have this success message, and we don't see this on here. We don't see any class, and we don't see any class on this error message. But what happens is, um, and you can see this, is that this is hidden right now. And this is hidden right now, but if I want to see it show the state, it's these, right? And so all you're doing is this part of the code that we're adding in is going to allow us to just use those like normal. So you just style your, your error state and you style your success state like normal. And then um, this will this will allow us to use those. So I'm just grabbing those. So while you don't see those on there, if you were to publish this and then like inspect it, these would be the classes that were on there. Okay, the next thing is we're just gonna start. We're 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 gonna append this uh, data. So we've already appended up here the actual file, and we appended it when we on um, uh, when we changed it. So when they actually uploaded it uh, on submit, we're gonna append the form data of the name and the email. So this works the same as over there. So remember, these things are just, those variable names are just the top of the columns. And then here, name is just this, right? It's the value of it. So for our name, it would be like, um, here's our names, our list of names, and it's Bill and Kathy and their emails. And then the last step is to actually send this off. And this is this long function, and then I'm just closing the... Um, this this guy right here. So let's just dump this in here. And, um, you know, there's tons of great uh, tutorials on using fetch. Um, it can be a little bit confusing, um, but if you just like, copy and paste this in, um, it should be easy. There's only there's only a few things you got to know about. And this is the most important thing. We want to fetch. We're saying, where is this going? Where are we sending this form? And so it needs a URL here. So Let's go over to get form and get this set up. So on get form, there's a great free tier. Okay. And I've already set up an account here. Now I'm ready to set up a form. Now they have options for uploading files with Ajax. That is to say, if um, you don't want the page to refresh, which is like the standard procedure for Webflow forms is that 
it, they normally don't redirect you anywhere after. It's just nothing, okay? That's what you typically wanna do, sending people to other pages. That's Some people do it, but that's fairly uncommon nowadays. And that's typically what people wanna do. Now, the code they've given you here doesn't actually work. And so that's why part of the reason why I've made this tutorial is to kind of update the code that they have because uh, it just doesn't work. So um, we're going to make a new form here. We're just going to say, we'll call this, let's say invoice as, and we're going to create a form. Okay. So it's given you all this stuff. You don't care about any of this stuff. All we care about is this URL here. And notice it is a post that has to be as a post. So just put that URL right in here and make sure it's at post. But you can handle these if you want to automate other things with it. Of course, uh, GetForm is on um, Zapier, and so you can you can do that like normal. So there's nothing really sort of left out. And we also have to set the method to post. Okay, so we've got our URL. We dump it in there. The method is post. The body, that is what are we actually sending, is that form data object that we made up here. And then we dumped a bunch of stuff in here, dumped a file, dumped an email, dumped a name. And now we're saying, okay, now just send this big bundle of information over there. Okay. So when, when I call this fetch, that's what's happening. So here we're just doing some like error checking and this is what's going to deal with the styling. So if the response is okay, it's it's what it's going to do if if it's going to I'm just console logging but we can we can take that out we don't need that then it's going to say the success that's up here the style display block and the error and the, the and and all of these are I just looked at what um webflow does when there's a success or failure and all they do is just change these display properties and so right here is just doing what webflow normally does and that's what allows us to work with those success and error uh things in the form okay and if it's an error error it just shows that stuff up and that's it okay so that's that's everything we've set up our form it's super easy okay now there is one more uh, thing that we've got to do and I'm going to show you that right now. So, okay, we also have to add a custom attribute onto the form and that is this enc type and this thing and they give you this in get form and this value multi part slash form dash data and save and then we can publish this. So there's one more step we have to do to ensure that there's not a redirect. And in the action, you have to add a hash. Why? I have no idea, but that's what you got to do. Okay. We also have to add a custom attribute onto the form. And that is this enc type and this thing. And they give you this in get form and this value multi part slash form dash data and save. And then we can publish this. Then we can publish this and go to our form and fill it out, pick a file, submit, and there are natural Webflow things. And if we look in our get form, there is our form. John, the moon designer, this is my date, and here is my file that I uploaded. Or I can actually see it if you come over here right there. All right. So I hope that's helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions. The code is a, a little bit tricky to, to set up, but it's, it's not too bad. Um, and, but it's not too bad. And uh, this really saves you a little bit of money. All right. Let me know if you have any questions.